All right, it is Monday the 23rd, and I'm going to make a video today. Not with the new thing. It's going to be the same project we talked about last time, but there's been a few questions, and I'm going to add more detail. So you'll hear the stuff that you would have heard if you were in class, or maybe even if you are in class now, you'll come back and check this later to get some reminders. Last time, we talked about the outline transitioning into a first draft. So the outline, it says four turned in, but it's really a lot more because I sent some back with comments. The outline says, hey, you've got your idea, but we want to make all the little necessary bits fleshed out to, I don't know, the way I've been describing it is like, this is the stuff that goes on the scoreboard in the story. It's like the characters try different things against each other to escalate the conflict, and then something happens at the end. And this is all the stuff that's like what you might call plot. Um, I don't really like, you know, breaking it up into that way where there's like plot and character and uh, setting as separate items because they're all flowing in the real story. But this is the stuff of like who does what, what happens. Honestly, the hardest part, the most important part, is right at the beginning. I said this last time, but I'll reiterate. Giving your character a real clear motivation right at the beginning is so important, because then we know, throughout the rest of the story, we know like what matters, what to look out for. If we know that they have a very specific goal to get one thing, then every other action that happens in the story we can evaluate it against that. We can be like, oh, this helps them get their goal, so it good, it's good. Or this hinders them from getting their goal, so it's bad for the character. And otherwise, things might just happen or kind of just floating around with no um, value to it. So that's really important, and you don't have to tell us why. This is kind of something I've mentioned to people. You don't have to do a whole prequel and tell us why they want what they want. You can just say, hey, this guy wants to go to Hollywood and be a star. And we go, okay, I'm going with it. So the next step, and I talked about this last time, is to make a first draft. So the first draft is going to have three categories. One is this stuff on the screen right now. One is some description and dialogue, which is the kind of thing that doesn't appear in an outline. And then the last section is your length. So let me just type that right now on the video. I'm going to say Monday, August 23rd, story, first draft. This is your first assessment grade of the quarter. Most of our assessment grades will be writing and not, not like a quiz or you know, a group project or something. Although you never know, we might do something like that. Now, it will be judged on three categories. First, the plot that was in the outline. You can check those criteria here, and I'll link to that other assignment. Second is the stuff that doesn't show up in an outline. I'm going to say, with a little alliteration, I'm going to pick two D words, description and dialogue. Your story should describe the land, people, society, speech, whatever it is that matters for your plot. For example, if it's a fantasy story, you'll need to tell us how the magic works, you might say, well, well, in this world, uh, there's a certain type of person who can 
uh, cast spells, and if they say this magic word, then blah, blah, blah. And then we need to know at the beginning what the rules are so then we can know what to watch out for and we don't just get surprised later. But it depends. If you're in uh, modern day high school, you don't need to spend a whole lot of time telling us what the walls look like or something, because we probably already know. But if you're in a fancy underwater cave, then maybe you do want to tell us what the walls look like, because we might not know and we might be interested. So it depends on what we need. If you're describing people from the past, then we might want to hear about what clothes they wear, or what technology they have, which is not the same as ours. But if it's 2021 and you say they pick up their phone, we know what that means and you don't have to tell us. Okay. You also want at least some dialogue. Your story might have a lot, or just a little. But let's follow the basic rules. Uh, quotation marks around exact words. Uh, for example, if you just say, like, oh, he told me that the guy I was looking for had left yesterday, you won't put quotes around that because it's not exactly what he said. But if he said, quote, Bob was here yesterday and then he left, then that goes in quotation marks. And I know we've already seen a story that breaks those rules. We saw the William Carlos Williams didn't use quotation marks. That was kind of a style in the 20s and 30s. Let's just go with the basic style for now, and you can maybe change it later. And the real key one, and this is always super helpful, even if you don't notice it, it's the thing that helps you know who's who and what's going on, is a new paragraph every time the speaker switches. So if you have two people going back and forth, you don't squish those into one paragraph. You say, he said, blah, blah, blah. Hit enter. She said, blah, blah, blah. And then your mind can very easily track it like you're reading a play going down the line and we're going back and forth between characters and if you have somebody talk and then somebody else talk in the same block of text the same paragraph it's super hard to follow you only want to do that if you're trying to make it intentionally confusing like you're trying to describe a scene of people shouting at each other and we don't even know who's who but that's pretty rare okay I might go back and add more details to these later, since this is an important grade. I might say, like, oh, this is exactly 10 points or whatever. But as of now, I'm trying to write it live while doing the video. By the way, I might actually do a live video sometime this week just to test it out just for fun, but I'll let you know. And three, the final thing is length. This draft should be a 1,000 words minimum. That's not as much as it sounds, but it's just a nice round number. And if you go way over that, that's totally fine. I know a lot of people are already on their way, and they've been writing a couple paragraphs for the last few days. So they'll blow past that, and that's no problem. I don't think I'm going to need to make a maximum, although maybe. Maybe 10K would be a nice maximum. But even then, that's not that long. We're going to read a couple stories that are longer than that, and it's not too bad. So... Here is your first draft. If you want to turn something in today, I can look at it, make some comments, and send it back. doesn't mean you'll be graded today, but it means we'll be making progress. So let's say uh, this guy is going to be 75 points. I know that sounds like a lot, but you always want to make the assessments big because if we have like some 10s and 20s, then they're so small they don't make a big difference. The last thing at the end of the quarter is always 100. So if you have all these little dinky ones and then you have 100, then it's almost like those don't matter. They get dwarfed by that final grade at the end. But if you have 50s and 60s and 70s, and then you have 100, well, it's a nice medium-sized thing, and it doesn't throw off the balance, you know what I mean? So we're going to have a 75, and then another 75, and then a 50, or whatever. And our total is going to be nice and distributed. Sound good?
great. I'm going to assign this, but like I said, I'm going to go back and add more later about the details of like this thing is 20 points and this thing is 15 points and really lay it out. Thanks.